What is going on, all you constant listeners out there in the multiverse? I am your host, BrianFord16, back with another episode of Geek Talk with BrianFord16. And in this episode, I am going to be reviewing Superman vs. Meshi. I uh, read this manga in one sitting. It wasn't a whole lot of pages, though, but nonetheless, I enjoyed it. And also because, obviously, I'm a Superman fan, but I'm also a fan of Japanese food. I enjoy eating Japanese food. As a connoisseur of Superman, and actually as someone who loves Japanese food, I, I couldn't resist purchasing this com this manga, so that's what I did. And it was written by, um, this manga that um, was written by Satoshi Miyagawa, um, who also is doing another DC manga called um, One Operation Joker, where basically Joker races a de-aged Batman, or an age-regressed Batman, who's pretty much been age-regressed to a, an infant. And that's what one Operation Joker is all about. I mean, a sworn enemy raising his, or a villain raising his sworn enemy as a little baby. Also, this um, art in this manga was illustrated by Kai Kitago. And Superman vs. Meshi takes place in the DC Universe, which is um, where it's really peaceful. I mean, there's still stuff that happens still, but it's not a whole lot. Not like you see in the Snyder Cut films or in the main continuity and all that. It's just... It's just a peaceful, it's just a peaceful earth. I mean, in, except, you know, a little spoiler alert, in one, in another part of the story, you see parademons, but for the most part, the earth in Superman vs. Meshi is very peaceful because of the efforts of Superman and the Justice League. So without much, without having to do much or without, you know, a lot going on, what's Clark Kent to do? I mean, even while he's working at the Daily Planet when he can't report on major, you know, stories that are like full of action, he decides to go to, he decides to go to Japan and try out various restaurants and try out various foods at various restaurants. And that's what he does. And what makes this manga so fun is just that it's the writing and the dialogue. I think um, Miwagawa Superman encapsulates of several versions of Superman that we've seen over the years and in various media. Um, one of them being that um, Tyler Hoechlin from Superman Lois. I can see the gleefulness of Tyler Hoechlin in this manga. When Superman's trying out the foods, he just has this boyish grin. He's just so giddy and cheerful. And also, I see the, of course, I see the mild-mannered um, mannerisms of, and the clumsiness of Christopher Reeve, Superman from the Richard Donner films, um, in in this character. And I also felt like um, there was a part there was a part in the manga too where Miyagawa's Superman evoked Tom Willing's Clark Kent from the Smallville series when he um, from afar um, confesses like his love for Lois and hopes to one day share an, you know share some time with her while trying out Japanese food with her, but not as Superman but as Clark Kent. So I thought that was really I thought he you know he wrote Superman really well and. He and Superman's not the only character he does this with. Like he encapsulates with other characters, he encapsulates um, some of the characteristics that we've seen from other incarnations of the set characters. Like with Lois Lane, even I saw a lot of Bitsy Tulluck, um from Superman Lois. I saw um, some Market Kidder, and also Batman and Aquaman and the rest of the Justice League make cameos. But notably, Batman and Aquaman. Um, Batman, whenever I hear his dialogue. I cannot help but um, listen to Kevin, the late Kevin Conroy's um, voice, along with Diedrich, Diedrich Baker from Batman: The Brave and the Bold, and with Aquaman. Of course, I um, I hear and I even see Jason Momoa just being his silly self, and me just busting, you know, like. <laughs> it, I mean, it's just like with these characters, like he's they're so well written and so fleshed out. Um, it, I mean, just in terms of personality, you know, and it just makes the manga really fun. And also speaking of the characters, um, I like the chemistry, of course, between Superman and Batman, how they're obviously just polar opposites of each other. It's a perfect contrast. But, you know, as the story, as um, as the dialogue progresses between them, it's like two amazing ingredients that make the finest ramen. It um, it just comes together and it tastes really great. You know, it, it just it turns out really, you know, it just blends really well as Batman and Superman are just enjoying food. They're not out fighting crime. They're not out, um, they're not out foiling a robbery or whatever, or they're not out saving the universe. They're just sitting down like two friends sitting down, enjoying Japanese food. And it's so funny. They were enjoying Japanese food in a restaurant in Japan, because in one story, Batman 
um, took Superman over to a Japanese restaurant in Gotham, but Superman playfully castigates him by telling him, like, no, I'll take you to an actual Japanese restaurant. And Batman is a little um, apprehensive, but then when he takes him to the Japanese restaurant, you know, and they start eating the food, it just, the rest is history. And the two, it's like, again, it's just like two friends enjoying a meal, and they are friends, you know? But that's what it was. And, you know, in a sense, it kind of made me forget that I was even reading a Superman story. It was like, and that's one of the amazing things about Superman versus Meshi, too. It's just that, you know, with Superman, when he travels to Japan, you know, you see, I feel like you see more of Clark Kent than you do the Man of Steel, even. He's just himself. Like, he's enjoying food. He's not putting up a necessary a front. And, you know, like, oh, sorry. And he's like, oh, well, I'm Superman. And got a little carried away there. But, um, you know, he's just, he's just Clark Kent, you know, traveling, enjoying himself, having fun, and, you know, being childlike, too, in a sense. And that's one of the things I liked about it, too. It was, you know, it made you almost forget that it was even, like, a story about a superhero. You know, I mean, it is, but it made you kind of forget that. It's just a dude enjoying himself, having fun, and, you know, just trying out foods and th one of the hilarious um scenes in the comic and it's kind of a reoccurring gag is when su whenever superman eats um food that tastes really good sometimes his heat vision will like just spiral out of control kind of like a nod to smallville you know but in terms of food you know in this case which makes it all the more hilarious and um of course you know I cannot talk to, talk about the manga without talking about the art by Kit, um, Kai Kitago. That's how you pronounce it, Kitago. And the art is just so amazing, and especially when you know when you look at the um, the up close of the food. If you see here, a little spoil alert though, but I'll show you right here. See how the food's all detailed? It's almost that's how manga art is. I've read, I think I've read in Scott McCloud's, um, one of Scott McCloud's comics. I think it's called Understanding Comics. I've read that manga artists, um, a lot of them put so much depth in their art, especially when things are up close. Like, for instance, in some comics, you see like a cup, but, you know, just like a cup like this. But then in manga, however, sometimes you get a, a close up of the cup and you see all its details. Like, you see. Like with this cup, for instance, how it's from afar, you just kind of see it's a cup. But then if you look at it closely, you see that's a Star Wars cup with Darth Vader, Yoda, Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, Luke, Obi-Wan, all that. You know, I mean, you see like all the close-ups right there. You know, you see Darth Vader there too. But um, so that's how manga art is and that that's one of the things that amazed me it was like a ghibli film too now that i think about it even just reading this comic you know this food was this of course food itself is a main character in in this superman manga and the the lettering done by um actually before i even get to that um the art also reminded me a lot of the art done by the father of manga himself osama tezuka the creator of astro boy and that's what made it so amazing. I mean, it was like almost an homage in a sense, just the art style. And the lettering too, even now I'm getting to the lettering is also stays true to the manga tradition where it's just, unlike in the, uh, unlike in the American comics, like manga lettering is, it's similar though, but it's sometimes it's like out, you know what I mean? Like if it's like a narration, for instance, like it's just out and about like this here, even don't know if you can see it though but you see yeah see here it's like see how it's like just out and about it's not like in a box or anything like that so yeah so in closing um i would give superman and meshi a 9 out of 10 it's just that um i the reason for that rating is because um the manga superman versus meshi puts the man of steel in a mundane yet fun circumstance in which he's just trying out Japanese food and going to various Japanese restaurants throughout Japan. And it also, in my view, it further humanizes a hero who, I, who again, I feel is actually more like Clark Kent than he is Superman in the comic, and which makes him really relatable to all of us. And 
I write that because like any human being, even men or women who are faster than a speeding bullet and more powerful than a locomotive would want to travel to several places and try out different foods or meet different people. So that's why I give it a 9 out of 10. And I heard even there's going to be a second volume too, because this is volume one, but there's going to be a second volume coming out around November the night, around November of this year. So hopefully I get to review that one. But until then, um, Superman vs. Meshi is out right now wherever books are sold. Um, you can also buy it on Amazon, of course. So having said that, um, that um, does it for this review. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you all like this video as well. If you do, if you do hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button to subscribe for more content. I'm looking at doing more weekly weekly um, episodes like this. I mean, I might do a manga review or perhaps I might even um, I might even talk about a certain current event involving the SAG AFRA. I've been following the SAG AFRA strikes a little bit here and there. So be on the lookout for those two as well. And yeah, and I'm also looking at opening up a new, I'm actually looking at doing more episodes for the Demon Slayer Planet podcast um, where I do reviews of Demon, the Demon Slayer episodes as well as the manga and hopefully some um, some unboxings in the future too, perhaps. And I'm even also planning on opening a cosplaying channel too, so you can see my various cosplays. So that's in the works right now. But until then, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. And as I always say, stay ever so awesome. This is Brian for 16 signing out.